Welcome back to chapter three. This is the final part or discussion of periodic properties of the elements. In part seven, we're going to look at the final trends, electron affinity, metallic character, and electronegativity, and we're going to use our left and low and high and right rule. Electron affinity is the energy that's associated with adding an electron to the valence shell of an atom. And the more energy that's released, the larger electron affinity there is. Um, and so there's this description of how you can find it, but we know from our technique that it's left and low. So the, high, the, the higher values are going to be associated with those elements that are lifter and lower. And so you just apply that same same thing that we've done in the previous sections on these trends, okay? So left and low, so if it's farther left or farther or, or farther low, then that one will be the higher one. And again, that's how you use these. Um, metallic character also, uh, remember we have a zigzag line in between the metals and the nonmetals. And so the farther you get from that, line on the metal side the more metallic it's going to be and so just kind of a quick co comparison between the characteristics of metals and non-metals metals are malleable and ductile that means you can bend them as opposed to non-metals which are brittle metals typically are shiny uh, non-metals are dull the metals will conduct heat um, they will form cations and they lose electrons in oxidation reduction reactions whereas nonmetals are insulators okay um, most of them form anions or polyatomic anions and they gain electrons in an oxidation reduction reaction so metallic character is how closely an element's properties match the ideal properties that I just listed for metals. And so the metallic character is going to be left and low. And so they're pretty easy to, sh to um, figure out between 10. And the symbol for 10 is SN. And I always think in my head, 10 sounds like sin. And so there you go, you can remember that. It comes from Stannis, um, which is what they used to call tin compounds. They still call it that in toothpaste. You'll see Stannis fluoride sometimes. But it's lifter, so tin is going to be more metallic. The um, phosphorus or antimony, uh, antimony is lower. Um, germanium or indium, indium is lifter and lower. And then, of course, uh, between sulfur and bromine, you can't tell. I always give you one so that you'll say, oh, it's okay if you can't figure it out. So that's metallic character. And so um, I've given you some practice problems for doing that. The last one I'm going to talk about is electronegativity. Technically, electronegativity is not discussed until uh, some of the chapters ahead of us but I want to point this one out because electronegativity is one of the E's it's a high and right and probably of all the periodic trends that we've looked at electronegativity is the one you're going to use the most and it's a measure of the tendency of an atom to attract a bonding pair of electrons so basically how likely it is to pull electrons in to a bond and so electronegativity is high and right. And I always point out when I do this um, that if you look at your periodic table, okay, up here, um, we, we disregard the helium and the hydrogens, right? But right there is going to be fluorine, okay? And fluorine is the most electronegative element there is and so it's interesting because the electronegativity of fluorine is a 4.0 i just find that kind of funny because you know a 4.0 is an a average but um, a perfect electronegativity is an f so that might help you remember it so that's electronegativity and so just to summarize and, and remind you again 
the radius, the affinity, and metallic properties are all lift and low. So the lifter and lower they are, the higher or greater they are. And then your energies, your ionization energy, your effective nuclear charge, and your electronegativity are all high and right. And so anything that if you're comparing those characteristics, the higher and righter it is, the more uh, you will see it. And so if you just get those in your head, it's much easier than trying to remember. It increases as you go up and it, it decreases as you go down. And, you know, it's just, it's to me, it's easier. If it's not, feel free to read the, the uh, descriptions from the book. I did include those. So, um, but to me, this is the easiest way. And so that's why I teach it because I'm all about the easy way. And that concludes our discussion of the periodic table.